30 minute reviews. I am Adam. Um, this is going to be yesterday, but yesterday just kind of blew all together. Everything kind of went wrong all at once. Um, so I, I announced this this morning when I did um, Book of Boba Fett finale discussion. And I said, look, I was going to see, I had a ticket to see Death on the Nile. And I was going to go and do Death on the Nile, do a review of it, do a review for, you know, Smithtown Chronicle, do all of that. Uh, last night, so it's not bogging down my weekend, because it's Super Bowl weekend, and, you know, then I was like, oh, cool, advanced screening, that's awesome, I can go and do that Wednesday, and then have the rest of the weekend reasonably free, because I can watch Marry Me at My Leisure, because that's available on Peacock, and then I went to the theater, and I've only ever had, the, the thing is, it's like, I'm gonna say this has happened to me three times at this theater, and that sounds like a lot until you take into consideration how often I'm at the movie theater. Like, I'm at AMC at least once a week, if not twice a week. Um, like, there are times where I'm there three times a week, though, depending on if it's a big weekend or if it's something I want to see again. Or, you know, so the other thing, I have the option to go three times a week. So, you know, I have taken that option up. So I'm like, I want to see this again. I want to see this again. I'm probably going to go again because, you know, they're showing Spider-Man still. So I might see Spider-Man again. Um, or like Dune. I saw Dune multiple times in theaters and, 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 and all of that. So take into consideration how many times I'm at the movie theaters. The fact that I've only had three movie-going experiences get shut down by an unseen force, um, that would tell you how, you know, reliable it is. Whereas like three out of the hundreds of times that I've gone... Um, in the last few years, pretty good odds. I mean, as long I would say, if it's you know, I, I mean, it may not sound like a lot, but we, when you take into consideration how many screenings there are a day, as well, not just the ones that I attend, it's not terrible. I mean, I'm sure there are other ones where sh shit happens, but you know, whatever. So, uh, the first time was you know, Toy Story 4. I think I addressed that because I went to see Toy Story 4 in IMAX. Um, and IMAX seems to be the common thing, even though the IMAX had nothing to do with why the second time. So the first time... Oh, no, I was at Adobe the second time. Uh, so I went to see the IMAX Toy Story 4, and, um, you know, movie isn't starting, sound's not syncing up, something's going wrong. Um, so movie eventually does play. It plays, like, 20 minutes late. They get it to work. Uh, I get to see the inner workings of the computer that they're using. Um, so, like, we see... You know, that they're running it on Windows Media Player and, like, Windows 95 or, at best, XP, um, which tracks for big businesses. Because if you think about it, like, you know, if I know something works and I have the option to upgrade to something that may not work or I can't guarantee it's going to work with 99% accuracy, I'm not going to do it. So, sticking with what we know works makes sense. So... I, I, I go to see, you know, Toy Story 4, they eventually get it working, and I'm like, oh, okay, but that really puts things in perspective, and it also really makes me realize that I'm severely undervaluing what Windows Media Player can do. Um, so it plays, but then as we're leaving, there's a lady standing by the door, and she's like, hey, you know, there was an error earlier, so to, you know, apologize for the inconvenience, here is, um, you know, two free passes to go to movies in the future. I'm like, all right, sweet. All right, so I got to keep those. Uh, then the second time was a fire alarm went off, and we had to evacuate, and that was during Venom, Let There Be Carnage. Um, and that was the second most recent one. For Venom, Let There Be Carnage, I missed the last, like, ten minutes of the movie, plus the post credit scene, which led to me making an, a, a statement about the post credit scene, um, having not seen it, and then needing to, you know, recant in, in a following episode. So, that all, you know, happens there. Then comes uh, the final one, and the most recent one, which was last night, with, you know, Death on the Nile. And I went directly from work to the movie theater. I get to the movie theater a few minutes early, and I go in. I don't think anything is necessarily wrong, because sometimes when they do these, you know, the few times I've gone on the Wednesday night, you know, advanced screening, like when I went to see... Um, Nightmare Alley was in this format, same with, or maybe Nightmare Alley wasn't on IMAX, but it was, you know, early screening, you know, so when I went to see that, and when I went to see, um, Last Night in Soho, 
Um, and sometimes, too, if you go to an early enough showing on a Thursday, um, this will happen, too. You'll go, and it'll be a, uh, like, a, the screen won't, you know, have been set up yet. So rather than have it play the wrong movie that's been playing all day, it's almost like they turn it off until it's time to play the next movie. And then at which point they'll leave the, uh, what's it called? They'll leave the, the next one going. Um, so, so all of that, you know, and, and then I get there and, you know, I don't think anything of it because it's, you know, that's going on. Then it gets to be like, is a six o'clock screening? Like 6.05 and I'm like, hmm, that's a little weird. Um, and it's still not playing. So at that point, I'm like, what the fuck's going on? Fortunately for me, someone else had the, uh, the, the foresight to go and ask someone rather than sit there in the dark. Um, and, and they go and ask, and then they come back. It's like they're working on it. So they're working on it for a little bit. About 20 minutes pass, and then we, the manager comes in, and he's like, sorry, movie can't be played. We'll give you free passes. And I'm like, all right, fair enough. So, you know, I have A-list, so it's really no skin off my nose if I don't use the passes, like, the thing is, it's like, when they give you two passes, it's like, to compensate you for the screening you're at, rather than refund you, they give you a pass to go for free next time, um, and then the, the other one they'll give you is, um, you know, a, like, an apology, here's another free movie on top of that, you know, it's like, you know, to see this movie again for free, to see this movie for the first time for free, here's a free pass, and then, you know, just to, you know, as an apology, here's a second free pass, so, I always give them to my brother because I have a list and I don't, you know, it's not really, I, like, it's infrequent that it happens where I would need to use the free pass in the same week um, that a movie comes out. But, um, if that's the case, I'll just wait until it refreshes in, like, four days and, and then go with that. Um, so, so yeah, so, that's why Death on the Nile didn't come out yesterday. I'm going tomorrow to see it because today I have an appointment. Um... Expressway delays. Um, so yeah, so that's why uh, that's why that didn't happen yesterday, as originally planned and scheduled. Um, but tomorrow morning we will have uh, a great um, discussion of Peacemaker, the seventh episode. Um, I watched it two weeks ago at this point, um, and I did not see any explanations as to what the cow is, which is good because it doesn't mean it's just me who was like, what the fuck is a cow, um, after seeing that episode two weeks ago, so, you know, um, it's one of the things where it's like, you know, it's some obscure DC Comics character, and the, the thing is, too, it was really funny for me to go and read the theories about what was going to happen, knowing what was going to happen, it was a weird kind of like, haha, I know where this is going, and you are very wrong, screen rant, um, and, you know, here we go. Um, so what we have today is we have a few news stories from yesterday, and then what happened was I didn't plan, I, like, I heard there was an Nintendo Direct yesterday, and I was like, oh, cool, so I'll cover that on my way home from work, and then that'll work out, like, you know, on the way to work, I did Academy Award nominations, on the way home, I'll cover the Nintendo Direct, and then it'll all even out, you know, and then I'll get to, it'll all be covered and everything will be done perfectly fine, and everything will be done. I didn't realize that the Nintendo Direct wasn't starting until 5, which is uh, right before I get out of work, and it was going to be 40 minutes. So the Nintendo Direct wasn't going to be ending until I was already on my way home. So I wouldn't be able to do that. Um, then I went to the movies, and when I left the movies, I was like, I don't have time to watch a 40-minute Nintendo Direct, um, or more accurately, listen to it, you know, while I'm driving, because that is unsafe. And, um, here we are, you know, today, we're going to talk about a few select things in Nintendo Direct, things that piqued my interest, not necessarily things that are the most accurate or most important, um, you, you see, you can't get, wait until the last second to get into the lane and then do this and then, asshole, um, so, so yeah, so, um, let's see, so, Let's talk about first, I think it's interesting that they're porting, they're continuing the port of old Star Wars games. I do really like that. Um, they did port over Jedi Knight and Jedi Knight 2 originally. Um, and those were the first two. They ported over uh, Episode 1 Racer uh, with Pod Racing, also a pretty fun game. Um, they, they're porting over Knights of the Old Republic, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong on that. Don't take that as a fact. 
Um, but they did announce yesterday that two of the more controversial games to come out of uh, LucasArts um, would be getting a port as well. I know there are people who hated these games. I loved these games. Say what you will about me based on that. But I love these games. And I, I, I would I, I, I really appreciated these games. So um, the games I'm talking about are The Force Unleashed and The Force Unleashed 2. Um, so, okay, just, you know what? Just Here's the thing. You can't do that and then block traffic, you asshole. Um, Force Unleashed and The Force Unleashed 2 are, uh, you know, it's a story of Vader's apprentice uh, Starkiller... Um, who had a few choice, really dumb names that George Lucas almost dubbed him as for his Sith name, including, if I remember correctly, Darth, um, Insanius was one of them. Um, I seem to recall reading Darth Icky, and I was like, oh, that's dumb. Uh, but none of those really stuck, and it just stayed with Starkiller, which was a name that originally, um, you know... Originally, that was Luke's name, Luke Starkiller. Uh, and the name eventually got adopted for the base in Episode 7, uh, Starkiller Base. Um, which, you know, was pretty apt to describe the base, considering it was a base that would absorb power of one star and then would be able to destroy another galaxy. You would think that what they would do, another universe, you would think that what they would do was have it target the other star and have it destroy the other star, hence keeping the name Starkiller. But really, Starkiller appears to only refer to the the method of fueling, where it's like, yeah, we, f- we, f- we kill a star to fuel this, you know, machine, so, yeah, like, it still feels kind of weird, but whatever, um, what else was there, so, so that's coming, and, you know, I'll buy it, I, I didn't watch the full trailer, I just caught it, uh, as I had turned on the Nintendo Direct that was live, um, and I had seen that, um, they were announcing that, I was still at work at the time, so I didn't see. I would assume it's Game of the Year edition. Those DLCs were really cool. Um, and it's one of those games where it's like... It, you, you've played these games before. They're short, action-based games. You play through the story quick, but it's more about getting a high score um, at the end than it is, you know, doing that. And then playing through at different difficulties to get up to the top and be the best. And it's, it's really interesting in that way. Um... And the, the, the second one, ending on the Death Star, and going through the interior of the Death Star is really cool. Um, no, was that the second one, or was that the first one? If the first one ends on the Death, the first one ends on the Death Star. Um, and once again, these games aren't canon, so whatever. Um, let's see, there was also the new Mario Strikers game. Uh, if you are me, uh, you love... I mean, there are a few other people. I, I saw a lot of love for this. Um... A lot of people are really interested in this. Uh, Super Mario Strikers um, was a game that came out for the GameCube initially. Then there was Strikers Charged for the Wii. Then the franchise kind of took a back seat. And then, I guess, based on the success of Mario Golf... Well, I mean, it doesn't make sense of how long they should develop a game. But, you know, there was there's, there's always a desire for sports games in video games. Um, and for whatever reason... Um, well, I, I know why. It's just, you know, the Switch uses different hardware, so releasing games on the Switch is a costly endeavor, on top of the fact that it doesn't run the same graphics capabilities as the PS4 and the Xbox One, or the Xbox, well, I mean, saying that, let alone the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, I mean, it it does, it it doesn't even run on that, it doesn't run on the level of last gen, let alone, you know, I guess what we call current gen, PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, um, it doesn't run on that level even. So, to sit, like, we're going to downgrade the game and use an entirely different method of play, and, you know, there's a touch screen involved, and there's a bunch of other things that get incorporated, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, it doesn't make sense to, you know, release this game on, on those consoles. So what ends up happening is there's this kind of vacuum for Nintendo to create their own, and they cre- and that's the thing, too. It's like, you know, Nintendo... Um, cares about international audiences, not just American audiences. So that's why they don't have Super Mario Football or anything like that. Or even they did Mario Basketball three by uh, three on three back on I think it was the Switch on the the, the DS back in the day. Um, but now it's you know they don't even do that. Now it's just Super Mario. Uh, what's it called? Super Mario. Uh, you know they have tennis. They have. Uh, 
um, golf, and now they have this new one, um, which is, you know, soccer making a comeback. I could see them doing, uh, bringing back Sluggers if this sells well, um, which would be great. Super Mario Sluggers was really fun. Um, but this game looked fun, and there was a certain, like, you know, latent, like, Pavlovian click of joy when they, I heard they were using some of the same sounds as the original. Like, at one point in it, it does sound deranged, but at one point during, someone checks Luigi into the electric barrier, and that's the same noise he makes when you check him into the electric barrier in the original, and it, it, that noise, um, you know, hearing that, I was like, oh, this sounds exactly like it did back in 2007, 2008, whenever the original came out, um, it's 2006, 2006 sounds right, but so worth it, so fun, this game, um, that's going to be one I'm definitely going to check out. Uh, what else was there? Um, Advanced Wars 1 and 2 have a release date. I didn't write it down. New information about Splatoon. Didn't write that down either because I'm not a big Splatoon fan. And I think that's fundamentally where my problem comes in is that I'm not a fan of these things, so I don't cover them. Like, this thing is very, in a way, masturbatory where it's like, these are things I like and I'm going to talk about what I like. Um, so if you are looking for information about other things, you have to go elsewhere. Um, cause I don't, I've never played Splatoon, Splatoon never really, you know, it's not that it didn't appeal to me, but when Splatoon came out for the Wii U, I was like, alright, this is kind of cool, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, you know, maybe I'll check it out if I can get it on clearance, and then Nintendo never marks down their stuff, like, it's like Disney, where it's like, you know, they, they know they have you, so they can't go, they don't go lower, it's like, what are you gonna do, go somewhere else, oh wait, you can't, get Splatoon from another developer, I dare you, um, so, no, I never played Splatoon. Um, what was the other one that I was thinking of? Um, um, fuck. Mm, they, uh, oh, the DLC for Mario Kart 8. I have mixed feelings about it. On one hand, I do really like the level of support they're giving Mario Kart 8. Because I, I said this when Mario Kart 8 came out, and they did the first DLC pack for it, which ended up being bundled together in Deluxe for the Switch. Um, I said that I think this is the best deal in, like, in gaming today. If you watch this, if, if you look at the pricing structure for this, and compare it to other games, you know, with the amount of stuff you're getting in terms of tracks... You're getting another full amount of... A full game of tracks... Um... For, like, 20 bucks, I think it was... For the DLC pack in Mario Kart 8... Uh... For the Wii U... Then... When it came out for the Switch... And it was a full game... It's like, okay, that's cool... Now, this new one... Is adding 48 new tracks... Which doubles the number of tracks... Um... And it's no new characters... But it's 25 bucks... And it's included if you have Switch Online Plus... Which is the one that includes Sega Genesis and uh, Nintendo 64 games. So, yeah, I, I, I'm kind of conflicted about this. Um, I do like the, the fact that they're doing this, and I'm not going to say that they're wrong to add in this many tracks. I think what this is, this is a harbinger of what tracks are being ported to the inevitable Mario Kart 9, Mario Kart 10, Mario Kart 11, whatever you want to call it, considering there have been... Uh, two other Mario Kart games that have come out since Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. That would be Mario Kart World Tour and Mario Kart The Home One um, that I've, I've talked about being a weird idea. Um, so between those, you know, I, I, I look at this and I'm like, okay, so Mario Kart... Um, what's it called? So, so they're going to add in all these things. Now the first batch of tracks comes out on March 18th and that first batch of tracks... It looks kind of heavily skewed towards, I mean, look, the, the game that has the most representation um, from that is, World, is Mario Kart World Tour, um, which is the one on mobile devices um, that has real world environments. And looking at it, I kind of understand why they have that, and that's because, you know, it they, they didn't have any of those tracks in past games. So, obviously, if they're going to include 48 retro tracks, the one that's going to have the most in every set is going to be World Tour. I don't think that necessarily 
we are looking at a situation where that is, you know, ideal. Like, I never... Pl- like, to say there are retro tracks is kind of disingenuous. It, bleh, disingenuous, because it's not exactly retro. Like, we... Like, these games have existed... Like, this game is fairly new. It'd be like if, you know... Like, they always did that, where, like, the game right before, they would always include some tracks from that. But to say that this is retro is a little bit, you know, inaccurate. Especially when the NES doesn't have any representation in this first set. Um, Granted, I haven't looked at my copy of Mario Kart 8 in a while. Um, So I don't know how big the representation of, you know, that is in the retro tracks. (laughs) Um, for some reason, when they announced that Coconut Mall and, um, the other one were going to be in it, Coconut Mall and Choco Mountain were going to be in this one, I was like, wait, they weren't already? Um, because I was, up until, and, and, and possibly including this moment, I was convinced those were already in the game. I, I, I'm, I'm very likely wrong, considering they're adding them in now, but that's, you know, there. There is no double dash representation, which I'm assuming is, I don't want to say intentional, but I I will say probably, um, you know, a little bit because they don't want to, you know, I'm not saying they don't want to do something, I'm saying they're putting three tracks in from World Tour here, because they have to evenly distribute the World Tour tracks, otherwise no one's going to be happy with a pack of entirely World Tour, um, especially if it comes toward the end, and they don't want to front load with a bunch of things that people will want. They want to be able to push this out over the course of a year and be like every every two months or so. Oh look, here's new tracks. Oh look, here's new tracks. Oh look, here's new tracks. And I think that when we inevitably get Mario Kart 9, this or Mario Kart 10, this will bode well because this is them preparing these tracks in a modern environment where you know we we now have all of these tracks that are available encoded. And, and playable on the Switch at that graphic level, that it should make it a little bit easier to port. In the same way that, like, you know, I think I'm not totally against them uh, them being Rockstar, you know, making the next-gen ports of game, of, of you know, GTA V. Because if you look at, like, what, you know, what happened with them when they ported it the first time, it was GTA 4, uh, GTA 5 had just come out on next on the previous gen, PlayStation 4 and, and Xbox, uh, PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, right before it swapped over to the next generation, and, and the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One had come out. Um, so then once they come out, they're like, all right, we'll port it over and, and, and do that. So they port it over, and then they're on the next gen consoles, but, you know, they I don't think they ever intended to make GTA 5, uh, GTA 6 on PS4, Xbox One. Um, I think they always intended it for whatever would come next, be it PlayStation 5 and whatever the hell they were going to call the Xbox Series X. I think that was always the plan. Um, unless GTA Online ceased being profitable, at which point they would cut back over. So they do all of that, and that all makes sense to me. And I don't want to be the person who's like, you know, well, they, they shouldn't have ported. But if you're going to port, like, you know, port to the next gen, I understand that in this case, because when you port to the next gen, you are... A, it, it's a tr- First of all, it's a, it's a training session for your, um, for your, for your staff and, and teaching them how to do that. It's cheaper because you don't have to pay for new sound... Ed- uh, sound uh, things, you can port over the music, you can port over everything, you don't have to pay for, you know, new story writers, you don't have to pay for new asset creators and all that, everything's the same, you just gotta design them for the next generation, and it does allow you to play around with what are we able to do in this new environment, so I've been okay with that to an extent, now that GTA 6 is coming, I'm even more okay with it, so all of that notwithstanding, um, I think that is interesting that they're doing this, um, I would have liked to see Breath of the Wild too. I would have liked to see something about DLC, um, that will probably end up coming for Legends Arceus. Um, it would have been interesting to see that, but whatever, you know, can't, can't always get what you want. Um, what else was there? I mean, Jurassic World Dominion had a trailer, I watched it. I'm not overly thrilled with the trailer for Jurassic World Dominion. Um, granted, I didn't exactly love Fallen Kingdom. I didn't hate it. Like, there was some vitriolic hate for Fallen Kingdom. I wasn't one of those people. 
but I did think that Fallen Kingdom could have been better, and I don't have high hopes for this one. So I'm not exactly, you know, like I like I, I will I'll see it. I'm gonna see it in the theaters. Like, like let's not be that person, but you know, it could have been better. Um, and the Buzz Lightyear trailer, I'm a little confused by because I would have not had Zerg in this movie. But it almost seems like the way Zerg is portrayed, it seems like he's going to be like Red Skull to, you know, the first Avengers, uh, uh, like, you know, in that movie. Like how Red Skull was kind of like never really directly confronting Captain America except for at choice moments uh, until the very end. That's what it kind of feels like he's going to be here. And I'm kind of okay with that. Um, that would be a cool development, I think. But we'll wrap up there for today. Um, so our next episode will be whenever the next, you know, bit of news that can give us 20 to 30 minutes of discussion comes out. Tomorrow morning we'll have a discussion of, um, Peacemaker, the seventh episode, and then the, what's it called, the, the newest, uh, we're doing Death on the Nile tomorrow evening. So until then, have a great rest of your week.